Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Norman, and in this video, we are going to be continuing our series on test automation using JUnit 5. In the previous video, we wrote a Jenkins pipeline script, and that script automatically executed our JUnit 5 test methods. And we even wrote a little bit of reporting uh, into that pipeline script. We used the JUnit Jenkins plugin, which uh, reported out test results within Jenkins. Now what we're gonna do is expand out that reporting capability using InfluxDB and Grafana. So once we finish, when our Jenkins pipeline script runs, it will take the uh, data from the test reports, the JUnit 5 test reports, and it will push that data to InfluxDB using the InfluxDB Jenkins plugin. Uh, and then once that data is pushed, Grafana will query InfluxDB and display those uh, that test report data on a Grafana dashboard. So in order to follow along with this tutorial, I expect that you already have some working knowledge of InfluxDB and the terminology around InfluxDB, like series, tags, fields, and so on and so forth. And then also working knowledge of Grafana, like how to create uh, a dashboard and how to add a data source to Grafana. You'll need a Jenkins server that has the InfluxDB Jenkins plugin installed on it. And you'll also need InfluxDB running on a server that is accessible to uh, your Jenkins. And finally, you'll need a Grafana server that has access to the InfluxDB server. Any code that we write in the next few steps will be available on my GitHub repo. And I've included a link to that GitHub repo and the associated branch uh, in the video description below. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab a coffee and let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is create a database that we can push test data to. So I've opened up a terminal in my uh, VM and I'm going to open up the influx uh, shell. So I just type in influx and now I'm in the influx DB shell. And to create a database, all I have to do is type in create database and then I'm going to call the database JUnit data. Okay. So that just created a JUnit, uh, a database in Influx. And uh, we're going to use it for all of our JUnit test data. So that step is pretty simple. Uh, the next step is that we need to go to our Jenkins instance and make sure that the Influx DB plugin is installed. I've already installed it on my Jenkins instance. Um, but just to show you uh, what the plugin uh, identifier is and what it looks like. I'm going to uh, uh, bring it up here. So under installed, I have influx DB. So the ID of this plugin is just called influx DB. So if you haven't already installed this plugin, go ahead and install it now. After installing the plugin, we can then configure the settings for this plugin uh, under manage Jenkins. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go to manage Jenkins. And then I'm going to go to configure system and I'm going to scroll down to, uh, let's see, influx DB targets. And I'm going to add a new influx DB target. So the description is required and I'm going to call it uh, JUnit uh, test data. And then the URL, I actually already have the same target uh, added previously. So I'm going to just copy this URL and paste it down here. Uh, this is where my database is hosted. It's actually hosted on localhost uh, 8086. But this Jenkins uh, server is running in a Docker container. So the IP is not uh, the loopback address 127.0.0.1. Uh, to connect to the host machine, which the InfluxDB server is running on, I have to use uh, this uh, IP address. So this is uh, where my InfluxDB server is running. Username and password, I haven't uh, enabled authentication uh, on, my, uh, on my database, so we don't need to do anything with that. Uh, and then the database that we want to pub uh, publish data to this one is going to be the one that we just created. So we're going to call it uh, JUnit data. We'll leave the remaining default settings and then save our uh, configuration for the plugin. So the next step is to add a new data source to Grafana and we're going to uh, add InfluxDB as a data source that Grafana can query. So I'm going to navigate to uh, my Grafana instance and 
Once I'm there, I'm gonna go down to configuration. I'm gonna select data sources, and then I'm gonna select add data source. I'm gonna select influx DB, and we're gonna call this, uh, let's, let's call it uh, JUnit uh, test data. And the URL is just going to be uh, localhost 8086. Uh, in this case, uh, Grafana is running on my host machine. It's not running inside of a Docker container. So I can use localhost, uh, for my case at least, I can use localhost uh, instead of that uh, 172 IP that I use in Jenkins. Um, the rest of uh, these settings I'm going to keep as default, except for the influx DB details. I'm going to specify the database that uh, Grafana can query, and that's just called JUnit data. We're not using authentication, so we don't need to provide a username and password for this case. And I think that's all we need to set up. I think that should be good. So let's go ahead and save and test that connection. And it says that the data source is working. So now that we have Grafana configured with our Influx uh, DB database, and we have the Jenkins Influx DB plugin configured correctly, we can modify our uh, Jenkins pipeline script to uh, start publishing data to the Influx DB uh, database. So I'm going to pull up uh, our Jenkins pipeline script, and I'm going to scroll up to the top of our pipeline script. And above stages, I'm actually going to set uh, an environment variable. So I'm going to do environment. And then the environment variable that we want to set is called log JUnit results equal to true. And this is an environment variable that uh, the influx DB Jenkins plugin will uh, will need in order to publish results to influx uh, DB. And it's going to need this environment variable specifically for publishing JUnit uh, test results. And now that we have that environment variable set, let's go down to the testing stage and we're going to add a line here and we're going to invoke uh, influx, uh, the uh, influx DB plugin and use a built-in um, method called influx db publisher and the publisher takes as input a target so we already set up a target in the influx db uh, uh, plugin configuration page uh, in manage jenkins so we're just going to reference the descriptor of that target so i'm going to say selected target and then in quotes i'll put the the descriptor and let's go back to Jenkins to pull that uh, descriptor. Okay, so I'm just going to copy the description here, JUnit test data, and I'm going to paste that into the selected target. So now this publisher method is going to take the data in uh, our reports, and it's going to push that data to the specified Influx DB server. Let's go ahead and save, uh, commit, and push our work, and then let's see if uh, if the um, updated Jenkins pipeline is actually pushing test data to uh, the uh, to the database. So I'm going to add the Jenkins file. And then we'll go ahead and push. So now that that updated pipeline has been pushed, let's go ahead and run that pipeline and see if it uh, successfully, um, well, before we actually, before we run it, uh, we do need to update the configuration of the pipeline. So. I'm going to go back into our JUnit automation pipeline uh, that we configured in previous videos. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to update the branch that the pipeline is uh, pulling from, pulling the Jenkins file from. 
and you'll notice that I pushed it to um, this branch, InfluxDB hyphen integration. If you want uh, to continue using the main branch, that's totally fine. In my case, I'm using InfluxDB uh, hyphen integration. So I've updated the uh, updated the branch so it's pulling the correct version of the Jenkins file, the version that we just updated. So I'm going to go ahead and save the, the pipeline, and then let's go ahead and uh, run it and see if uh, this works correctly. So it looks like it failed. Let's take a look at uh, why the pipeline failed. So one of the test cases failed because we we specified the wrong uh, the wrong make uh, in the assertion, uh, and the remainder of the pipeline didn't continue. So our uh, our publishing didn't actually happen. So to make the publishing actually happen, let's go back to uh, VS Code, and what we'll do is we'll wrap um, we'll wrap our steps in uh, a uh, a catch uh, catch error block. So in steps, I'm going to do catch error, build result, success, and then the stage result will set it as a failure, but we won't fail the entire pipeline. So uh, I'll set that as a failure. Stage result is failure, and then what I'm going to do is the failing uh, code here is our uh, our execution of the tests. So let's go ahead and uh, put that line in the catch block and then the rest should be okay. So we can leave, leave the rest as is. So let's go ahead and commit and push that. Okay, and let's go back to our pipeline and rerun it now that it's been, uh, those changes have been pushed. And let's see if this works. Okay, so it does look like even though uh, the test method failed, the pipeline did continue and it did record the test results. And then after recording the test results, you see here that Influx uh, DB plugin was activated. It collected the test report data, uh, JUnit found writing to Influx DB. So it said publishing data to target, JUnit test data, and then it specified the URL that we provided in the configuration page for the Influx uh, DB plugin. And you'll notice that when I add a catch block like that in the pipeline script, uh, if I go back to the pipeline view page, it'll show uh, pipelines that uh, have a stage failing as unstable. So you'll get this, uh, this yellow ball here that represents an unstable uh, status of a pipeline build. But even though the test methods failed, it still published the test results to InfluxDB, which is what we wanted. So let's go ahead and navigate to the the influx uh, shell and verify that that data was actually pushed to our influx uh, database. So I'm going to open up my terminal here and I'm going to invoke uh, influx. I'm in the influx uh, shell now and I'm going to say use JUnit data to start using the JUnit uh, data database. And I'm going to say show series. Okay, and the uh, showing series will show uh, all of the series in this uh, in this database, and you can see I have several series here. Uh, one measurement is Jenkins data, so this gives me like build result um, and some other uh, information uh, unique to the Jenkins pipeline uh, itself. And then under this, I have the measurements that I actually want, which is. Uh, JUnit underscore data. So that really contains the test result data. If I want to see this test result data, all I have to do is um, select all. 
So select star from JUnit underscore data. And this should show me all of the test results. And there you go. We have the test results. Uh, test make failed, which was a regression. It was previously passing. And then test model uh, pass. So I get all of the information. I get the timestamp. And I get all of the metadata uh, associated with our tests. So this is great. We've confirmed that our test data is being pushed successfully to our uh, database in InfluxDB. And in the next video, we're going to actually create a Grafana dashboard that, uh, that visualizes this test data. And we'll add several metrics to that Grafana dashboard. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.